Good morning. If you've stopped by and joined us this morning as a regular member, we're so glad you're here. Or if you're coming to us from the virtual world or a family or friend invited you, we're equally glad that you've stopped by and we say we hope you'll stay through the whole service. We are Lake Oswego United Methodist Church, a place to connect to God, to others, and in the world. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, friends, our preachers are still preaching, our musicians are still rolling out contemporary Christian hymns to warm the heart, we're singing traditional hymns of the faith, and we've invited from the very youngest in our congregation to the oldest member to share with us in the practice of prayer in leading that and also in the reading of the generous uh, portion of scripture allotted for this day. Even though our world is shaken in the midst of this global pandemic, and, and even though our hearts are likely shaken too, we want you to know that here at Lake Oswego United Methodist Church, we believe that through every adversity and every hardship, we are not alone. God is with us. Stop. So continue, Pam. Today begins a three-part series where we talk about how God helps us steward all of our resources, our time, our talents, our financial resources. I invite you to listen to Peter Journey, a 50-plus year member of the church, as he reminds us how through a 2020 capital campaign, we settled a big lingering debt. And just imagine with Peter how we might take that money that we committed to indebtedness and transfer that to a 2021 pledge, a stewardship pledge that can continue the mission and ministry of our church, not only in our local environs, but in the community and far beyond it. We as a United Methodist Church and as followers of Christ are engaging in ministry that we believe transforms the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ. We hope that you'll join us this Sunday and all the Sundays beyond it. Come and see. We've got a lot to share. We're living in overwhelming times, aren't we? We're dealing with COVID, 
with isolation, with financial stresses and hardships. The prospect of being sick today is more complicated than it ever was, with special precautions to be taken that have affected every aspect of our daily lives. We have a national moment of decision coming up shortly, in a few weeks, and piles of confusing information to wade through. What are the right choices? How can we find answers for all the questions in our lives? What a blessing it is to have faith in God, to know that He is as close as a prayer, which is really a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. Let's turn to Him and pray. Heavenly Father, Praise to you, O Lord our God, King of all people everywhere. We acknowledge you sitting above the angels in your glorious heaven, and we praise your name. We are your people, and we are here together to worship you. Come among us this morning and calm us by your Holy Spirit. Be in my heart and on my mind today. The world around us today is broken as it has been for generations. We have sickness and death around us. We hear about it every day, and we are weary of it. We pray for your healing mercy to fall on your people, to bring relief from suffering and strength where we are weak. Strife and argument and confusion fill the air. We ask for your guidance and direction in sorting out truth from fiction and right from wrong. Show us which way to turn, which box to check, what we should do. We are easily distracted by the cares of our lives. We try to find security in collecting material things to increase our own comfort. And we forget that you are the master of the universe and the God of creation. We forget that your love for us is real and that finding our comfort and security in you is our true and lasting hope. Make us thankful for clouds and rain when it falls, for blue sky and sun when it shines and teach us to be content in whatever life brings to us every day. Come to us, Lord, and remind us that we are your own, the sheep of your flock, and remind us of your love. Make us sensitive to your presence in our lives so that we feel your closeness as we go about our work. We thank you for your promise to be with us always. Help us to acknowledge the riches of your love and teach us to be generous with others as you have been generous with us. Help us to recognize opportunities to love others as you have loved us. We come to you today as Jesus taught us, and we ask these things in his name knowing you are our loving Father. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, beginning in chapter 9 from verses 6 to 11. And I'm reading today from the contemporary English version of the Bible. Remember this saying, a few seeds make a small harvest, but a lot of seeds make a big harvest. Each of you must make up your own mind about how much to give. But don't feel sorry that you must give, and don't feel that you are forced to give. God loves people who love to give. God can bless you with everything you need and you will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for, for others. The scriptures say, God freely gives his gifts to the poor and always does right. God gives seed to farmers and provides everyone with food. He will increase what you have so you can give even more to those in need. You will be blessed in every way and you will be able to keep on being generous. Then many people will thank God when we deliver your gift. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. I'm going to give you a little bit of church history today. 20 years ago, I was asked to chair a long-range planning session for our congregation. We spent a Saturday in small groups dreaming up goals that we would like to accomplish. And then we came back together as a large group and prioritized all those goals. The most important goal that emerged was a desire to have a large gathering place where we could meet, have dinner together, play some games, and have a place to conduct 
congregational meetings. So a few of us got together and talked about what it would mean to have a campaign to build another structure. We thought it would have to be a combination of a capital campaign and bond sales to our members in order to raise enough money. We knew it was going to take about $2 million to do this project. So we held a congregational meeting, explained the concept and how we would go about it, and asked for a congregational vote to pursue the project. It passed unanimously. So we started with a capital campaign, and after a couple of months, we knew how many bonds we were going to have to sell. We hired an architect and a contractor and commenced to shovel dirt. Eric Carlson was our liaison with the City of Lake Oswego and the Fire Department. He made sure that we had all the necessary permits in plenty of time to move through the various stages of the project. George Benson was our liaison with the architect and the contractor, occasionally mediating a dispute between the two of them. He was on site almost every day from the start to finish of the building. It turned out, no, oh, I should say my job, my job was to sell enough bonds to raise the money to complete the project. It turned out that our church is located on what was a rock quarry. So we ended up having about $100,000 extra in rock removal that we hadn't planned for. Somehow we managed to make it through. At least we know that our church and our CAC are built on firm foundations. Some of you will remember that we had no trouble selling those bonds because interest rates were much higher then than they are now. However, after a few years, interest rates had come down fairly far, and so we called the bonds and replaced them with a mortgage. We paid monthly on that mortgage for many, many years. When Pastor Rolf Granath was our interim pastor in 2016-17, he suggested to us that we consider another capital campaign to raise the money to finish paying off the mortgage. I was hesitant. I wasn't sure our congregation was ready to undertake such a project, knowing it would mean we would have to raise about $1.1 million. But Rolf was very confident and he convinced us that we could do it. So the 2020 campaign was born. People made three-year pledges so that we could raise the money to pay off the mortgage. I suggested to Rolf that Jeff Mattern would be the perfect guy to head up the 2020 campaign. And it turned out I was right. Remember these? I only revealed this to Jeff about a year ago, but he's forgiven me for putting him in that position. With the able assistance of Marty Stivens, uh, Bob Pearson, and others, Jeff put together a remarkable group of people to carry out the campaign. And through the grace of God and through the generosity of this congregation, we were able to complete this project. We have paid off the mortgage. Hallelujah. I'm continually impressed by the generosity of this congregation. Many of us have paid these three-year pledges to the 2020 campaign and continued paying towards the monthly budget. Now that we have finished with the 2020 campaign, might we be able to increase our annual pledges so that we could do more with our annual budget. We do have plans to extend our outreach in this community and beyond, to start a preschool, to establish an overseas mission program, and much, much more. In a few days, you'll receive 
a packet of information about our plans and about the budget for next year. It will give you an opportunity to respond through a pledge card. Now a word about the Weigand bequest. We've been blessed beyond measure to have Nancy's gift and it has enabled us to complete many much needed projects such as installing a new fire alarm system which is going on as I speak and improving our wireless and phone systems among other things. And while this bequest is enabling us to make further improvements such as installing better, year, better audiovisual equipment in the CAC and in the sanctuary. Most of this bequest is put away in savings and investment accounts for the long term. We don't want to spend it all rapidly. We still need to support our monthly budget. So when you get your packet, please read through it Consider carefully what you might be able to do. Pray for guidance, and then fill out your commitment card. When Gloria and I got married 15 years ago, we agreed that it would be a good thing if we could tithe. We saw it as a form of discipline for ourselves, but also as a blessing to thank God for bringing us together and for all that he has given us and to help our church grow in ministry. When we both retired, we had to reduce our pledge, but we still tithe, and we're grateful that we can. Often when I'm praying or meditating, I am drawn to some words from Psalm 139. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Yet surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hides not from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. To you. In the mid-1980s, I left Lake Oswego to be the Peace Corps Country Director in Samoa for two and a half years. During my time there, I would read that psalm to myself every Sunday morning before the church service started. It reminded me that even though I was 5,000 miles from Lake Oswego, God still knew me and cared for me. And it reminded me of Lake Oswego United Methodist Church because the choir had sung the anthem, which is based on that psalm, as a blessing to me and my family on the last Sunday before we left for Samoa. As I speak these words, I can hear the anthem playing in my head. So, I would encourage each of you to take time to be still and to know God. As Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. Stand outside on a starry night and contemplate the sky as you realize how small we are, but how large is God's creation. And as you think about supporting our church's budget for next year, be mindful of the many blessings our Creator has given to us. May it be so, and amen. Good morning. We all know that October is an important month. We have Halloween at the end of the month. We also have the birth of John Geis in the middle of the month. But those things are secondary to the fact that October is Pastor Recognition Month. And hopefully you've already seen the quick news, that shout out, and that you'll take a minute to send a note or an email, smoke signal, whatever you want to send to our pastors, Michelle, and to Jade, and to our deacon, Dana, to recognize 
What a wonderful contribution they make to our church family. And as my granddaughter would say, Alleluia and Amen. his spirit to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his smile upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>